Okay, today we'll talk about the Stellaris DKL and 3S DRV8312 development kit. See we have inside. Included are the Stellaris development kit, documentation software. In this CD is where we will install the GUI from. Also, you have the Code Composure Studio IDE, which is what you would use to develop the firmware to go onto the LM3S818 control card. Inside you get a USB cable, USB-A for the PC and the Mini for the uh, for the L, uh, LM3S818 card. You also get a switch mode power supply module with AC ca uh, with an AC cable power cord. NEMA 17 24 volt DC motor. You have a number of uh, control cables. We're only going to use these three, the black, red, and yellow, for this demo today. Included are two jumpers, which should stay in their bag for this demo. Here we have the DRV8312 baseboard and a 100 pin DIM slot for our LN3S. 818 control card. Okay, now we're going to hook it up and do a little demo. Okay, we have the TI DRV8312 baseboard with our LM3S818 control card installed. It's hooked up to our PC through this USB cable. We have a DC power supply plugged in. To this J9 port. We only need to have these three wires to the NEMA 17 motor that's provided, or we're using the black, red, and yellow wires. Now we're going to start our Sandstorm InstaSpin GUI. I'm going to open up my shortcut. This will allow our, our laptop or desktop to communicate with our LM3S818 control card, which is mounted on the DRV8312 baseboard. First thing we're going to want to do once the application opens is go to the setup wizard. So go to connection, start connection wizard. We're going to connect our engine. You need, first need to pick a target. In this case, we'll pick the Stellaris M3 generic device. We need a connection method. I'm going to select serial and connect. You'll know everything is working well when you have three green indicators. At the very bottom you'll see them. One is the fault status, the other is DC bus indicator, and the third one is the driver over temperature warning. In the main uh, tab you have the motor speed indicator, a control mode knob, a motor current indicator, and the flush, uh, flux threshold control. Below that you have your, you can change your uh, control mode knob function with a pull down menu you have four options duty cycle, current, velocity, and cascade. For this demonstration we'll just use duty cycle. Also you, as I've said before you have the fault status which indicates whether the motor is functioning properly or whether it's communicating properly. You have four graphs in the, same ta in the main tab. You have the flux, back EMF, and VAG graph. And below those, you have the uh, speed graph. Um, so we'll start uh, controlling the motor by uh, selecting the enable motor. And generally, it'll have some default value it starts up at. And you'll know that it's working right here on the speed graph it automatically starts jumping up to looks like 1677 RPMs. Now to be able to chart your flux and your back EMF over on the right side second from the bottom is the start continuous read icon. By selecting that you'll now start be able, you will now be able to start seeing uh, your flux, your back EMF and your VHG. Another, another tab is the settings tab. Here you can control your startup, 
duty cycle, your startup ramp time. There's an advanced setup option. Also, you can control your control uh, current loop and your velocity loop. And depending on your motor type, you can actually change your uh, the number of poles by by whatever motor type that you have. Now back to the main on the control mode knob, we can increase our speed and our chart reflects that in real time or we can change direction as well. And go the other way. Now if you this this uh, is a fairly simple and easy uh, GUI and setting up your hardware is easy as well. Uh, if you have a motor control project that you uh, are currently working on, I recommend using this particular application.